The BVIs are a chain of 60 different islands. They reach all the way down this channel here called the Sir Francis Drake Channel. Uh, there are a cluster of islands as distinct from a sort of one after the other in a long line, which does mean that you've got a big body of very sheltered water, which are a sailor's paradise. Part of the reason the British Virgin Islands have remained a well-kept secret is that there are no direct flights in the UK. Getting there involves an international flight, usually to Antigua or San Juan in Puerto Rico, and then a local connection to the largest island in the group, Tortola. If you aren't staying on Tortola, you'll then usually be picked up by your hotel's water taxi from Trellis Bay, just a couple of minutes from the airport. The journey is rewarded by what is arguably the most stunning scenery and beaches that the Caribbean has to offer. What you really notice about the BVI's is the very relaxed pace, it's very easy going, there are relatively few people, you can, might well find yourself on a beach entirely to, your, to yourself, it's, uh, it's very very different from many Caribbean islands. The British Virgin Islands are of course renowned for sailing. With land always in sight, you can easily spend two weeks or more visiting different islands and anchorages every day. But for those who prefer to keep their feet on dry land, there are still plenty of ways to enjoy the sun, sea and perfect white sand. Water sports of all kinds are available at the different resorts and most will include both equipment and instruction. Diving is big here too. On Cooper Island, dive instructor Tom told me what divers can expect. The BVI is one of the top 10 dive destinations in the world. We've got some very healthy coral reefs. The BVI is also renowned for its wreck diving. Uh, we have quite a few wrecks out here. The most famous of those being the wreck of the RMS Rome, which was a Royal Mail steamship that sunk in 1867. Are the BVI a good place to come and learn to dive? Yes, we offer Discover Scuba Diving, which is a beginner's course. Uh, it takes half a day and it's a chance for people to try out scuba diving and see if they like it. Uh, we often take people around to the wreck to experience it. Um, they get to see the shallower part of it, so it's a great dive for them. Other activities include horse riding, cycling or just exploring. Each of the islands has its own unique appeal with wildlife, spectacular views and natural attractions to visit. These are the famous baths of Virgin Gorda. As you can see, huge granite boulders, they're as big as clouds. You can walk all the way through past these wonderful grottos and natural jacuzzis. It's a fantastic site, it's a very popular site. If you come, come after all the cruise ship passengers have gone back to their ships about four in the afternoon and you can have it all to yourself. What I found most surprising about the BVI's is that on the one hand you've got a very laid back, almost charmingly backwater destination. There are chickens on the road, there are occasional goats, there isn't even a traffic light or they're just putting in the first one ever. And yet, in this very peaceful destination, you've got some excellent five-star luxury resorts, no chain hotels, and they're scattered about the different islands. Here on Tortola, for example, which is the largest island, you've got a choice of properties. There's a boutique sugar mill where we are at the moment, which is both historic and famous for its terrific food. There's a larger property called Long Bay on a spectacular beach, and you've got a choice of villas. For more luxurious resorts, I would say go to the other islands, the smaller islands. On Virgin Gorda, you've got Byrus Creek, which is a Relais Chateau property. Its style is rustic chic, I would say. The food is, is terrific. There's lots of things to do on the island. Uh, you can take out the bikes that belong to the hotel. They've also got a small fleet of Boston Whaler, little motorboats, where you can run around the, the coastline. It's a very laid back, sophisticated, barefoot kind of place, perfect for couples, especially honeymooners. If you're going with a family, a better bet would be Little Dick's Bay, which is a larger property, it's on a superb beach, it's got a wide choice of rooms, including villas with uh, two bedrooms. It's also got a terrific kids' club, um, and it's very, very popular with families.
You've also got hotels that occupy their own island, most famously Richard Branson's Necker Island, right at the top of the price scale. More affordable is Cooper Island, which is a beach shack kind of style place, very chilled out, really a, a good place to do very little, listen to the, the waves lapping on the shore. And also you've got Peter Island, which is a very sophisticated resort. Uh, you've got a choice of rooms, some on Dead Man's Bay, which is a beautiful beach, others overlooking the marina. Uh, it's also famous for its spa, probably one of the best spas in the Caribbean. If I were coming for a holiday, I'd either, I think, combine two or three different islands, because not only the island's different, but the resorts themselves have very different character. Or, even better, I would stay in one resort for probably five nights and then go off on one of the resort's own crewed yachts where you've got a skipper and a hostess treating you in great style as you just float about the different islands visiting these wonderful anchorages. They call these islands nature's little secrets and with good reason. When you come to the BVI's that slogan makes immediate sense. It's a perfect destination for people who love water whether you are a sailor and want to go island hopping around or if you're the sort of person who just likes being on a beach totally by yourself with the most perfect water to swim in, it works both ways.